Hey guys, GT Racing here, and today I want to introduce you to Low Fuel Motorsports and the service they provide to the Assetto Corsa Comunicioni and R Factor 2 communities, or in other words, us. Now, the background footage for this video isn't, as per usual, a replay of any race I did recently, but rather a live recording of my license run for the low fuel motorsports license that makes you eligible to use their services but more on that later on but now before i start explaining what low fuel motorsports is and what they offer and why their service is absolutely great i just wanted to quickly mention that this video is only going to be relevant for you if you're playing assetto corsa competizione or r factor 2 on the pc as their services are currently not available for consoles and they are not planning on implementing that either. So, with that out of the way, let's move on to what LFM is and why I'm driving a qualifying session without a race afterwards on the Hungaro Ring. First of all, LFM is a community that tries to emulate the iRacing experience for both Assetto Corsa Competizione and R Factor 2. So if you take a quick glance at their website, we can see something similar to the iRacing website or the iRacing client, whichever it is that you are using or that you are more accustomed to. As you can see, there are several series in which you can participate depending on your personal rating. Like as you can see here, there are some rookie categories, there are some iron categories, and there's also a bronze plus and some other categories that are just not yet listed in this image. And similarly to iRacing, these track and car combinations are changing each week and are prolonged throughout a whole season. So basically what this means is that LFM features seasons where each season consists out of, I think, 12 weeks, and each individual week features an old track and car combination for the different classes. So in Assetto Corsa Competizione, the GT4 category and the GT3 category have different races each week. And there are also some endurance and other special series thrown in at random points. For some of these special events, there's also live stewarding in place and independent of the special status for any race, there's also some protests you can launch if you were involved in an accident or a collision that was, in your opinion, not your fault. Like there's after each race a 4 hour cooldown period and after those 4 hours you can launch a protest at their website and help keep the service clean. Now after this short introduction you might be asking yourself, well first of all, how much does this cost because this sounds way too good to be true? And second of all, you mentioned being eligible to using the services in the beginning of the video. So what exactly do I need to do in order to, well, compete? So first things first, all of their provided services are completely free since they are relying on sponsorships, Patreon supports and donations to keep the service going. Now, coming to the second point, in order to compete in their seasons, you first need to acquire a license. And how you get that license is pretty simple. So first of all, you need to have a safety rating in Assetto Corsa Competizione itself of 80 or higher. If you fulfill that requirement, you can go and sign up at their website, join one of the dedicated license servers, which are running a one hour qualifying session on their license tracks, which at the moment is the Hungaro Ring. And finally, you need to do a hot stint of seven laps where you stay within the 107% margin of the lap record that was set on one of the servers. Since that sounds overly complex, I'll just break it down for you. First of all, you need to have a safety rating of 80 or higher. Then you go to the website, sign up and join one of their licensing servers. And once you're on the licensing server, you need to stay within the 107% rule that also applies in, for example, Formula 1. What that means is, the lap record that is set is around 142 on the Hungaro ring and if you multiply that time in seconds by 1.07 we arrive at something around the 149. So what that means is you need to do a hot stint of 7 valid laps that are simultaneously below the 149. And that's it. Then you get your license and you can compete. It's really that simple. So yeah, if you want cleaner and more structured races, I can only recommend you their service. Now, that's pretty much it for the LFM 
advertisement if you wanna label it as such. And I'm gonna spend the rest of the video commentating on what is happening and what I was thinking at the time and doing in my own LFM license hot state. So to quickly summarize or to recap, I needed to stay below a 149, which shouldn't be too difficult considering personal best lap on the Hungaro ring was a 145.0 something. But that was like almost a year ago before I took my break. So yeah. Anyways, my personal goal was to stay around the 146s in order to have a slight gap to the 149s and also to not overdrive my car. Now, for the first lap of my hot stint, I pretty much hit the head on the nail and did an exact 146.0, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but here comes the thing, no matter if it's racing in real life like karting or anything else, or sim racing, I always have a tendency to, well, try to go quicker even if I shouldn't do so whenever someone drives in front of me. And that becomes blatantly obvious if you look at the top left side of the screen and look at the time delta. So remember, my goal was to be around the 146s, not overdrive my car and just chill in general, right? But as soon as I saw this car in front of me, I had this urge to like give it my all, catch up and then eventually overtake the car. Even though that is like one of the most stupid decisions one could ever make in a hot stint session where it literally doesn't matter where you are at the end of the session. Anyways, as soon as I caught up to the car, my senses kind of came back to me where I was like, yeah, well, I might have caught up, but like if I go for an overtake or any, any stupid move, anything like that, then I'm risking to take us both out, which really isn't ideal in this situation. And I might cost us both the opportunity to get a license for the LFM servers. Solely because if you look at the center of the screen, the qualifying session is almost ending. So any progress the both of us have made so far would be completely eradicated, which wouldn't really be a nice move of mine. I gotta be honest here. In the end, I basically just figured, you know what, I'm basically stuck behind this car. As I said, I don't want to risk any stupid moves or anything. So I might as well just try to stay as close as possible to him without making him overly uncomfortable and repeatedly signaling that I'm not intending to overtake him, at least not in any stupid position. Like I was aiming to stay close and then set up my move in the last corner of the track and then just breeze past him at the main straight. And as you can see in the following bit of the video, this worked out pretty nicely and coincidentally that was also the last lap apparently of his stint because he just slowed down after the finish line. And yeah, the remainder of my hot stint was pretty much only in free air so there's not really much to talk about except for the last lap because why should the hot stint ending up completely chill if there can also be some terrifying moments? So if you fast forward to the penultimate lap, we are just casually approaching the turn 3, turn 4 section with the fast and blind, mind you, left king. And then this happens. Yep, there's literally a car parked on the exit curbs of the blind and fast left king. So yeah, that was kind of scary in the moment. But the remainder of the penultimate lap and also the majority of the last lap was pretty much incident free with the exception of the again penultimate corner of the last lap where someone disconnected from the session, which is totally fine. But as you might know, Assetto Corsa Compliccioni responds to people disconnecting or connecting to the server with some lags. So yeah, I ended up almost spinning out in this corner because I just couldn't control my car anymore because of the lags. But luckily everything ended up being completely fine. So yeah, with that I'm pretty much done for this video. Again, if you want cleaner and more structured races you can sign up at Low Fuel Motorsports, the link is in the description. And if you did enjoy the video or could get something useful out of it, you could leave a comment, like, whatever. And lastly, you could also consider in subscribing to the channel for more sim racing content. Have a good one and happy racing.